Hello, and welcome to another episode of English Trivia. Together, we are on a journey of getting to know the history and some interesting facts of the English language. How many episodes were there anyway? Um, why, I believe this is our ninth episode? Hey, nine is a good number. It is, isn't it? What is nine in the old English? Let's count them from the beginning, shall we? An, toi, pre, ferro, fif, six, sefo, eta, nero, and tien. Pardon my pronunciation. Some of them sound similar to the modern numbers, don't they? They do. Hmm. You gave me an idea for today's episode. Which is? Let's see where the numbers come from, shall we? And why they're all different. The numbers we are all used to nowadays are called Arabic or Hindu Arabic numbers. The latter name is probably more accurate because it was Hindus in India who invented the system in about the 5th century. Of course, the question is, how did these numbers end up being used in English? Mm, what did people use before that? And what, what's the largest number? Um, Alright, that's three questions then. So, logically, let's begin with the second one. Until the 13th century, people used Roman numbers and used abacuses for calculation. Unlike the system we use now, where we use all 10 digits to make any number we want, Romans have repeated symbols like 1 and 1-1, one one, or combined ones like 1-5, one 5-1, five, five one, one 10, 10-1, ten etc. For larger numbers, they created new numbers like V for 5, X for 10, L for 50, C for 100, D for 500, and M for 1000. Interestingly enough, they didn't have a zero. They didn't need it because each of the symbols had to have a certain value. So, if we were to use this system today, this is what it would sound like. Um, what year were you born? Uh, sure, I was born in MD quadruple C L X X X. Was that MD quadruple C L quadruple X? No, triple X. Unfortunately, I'm not that young. <laughs> Roman numbers were quite confusing in calculation, and you couldn't tell from the length of the number how big it was. For example, M C M X C I X is 1999, but 2000 is MM. As difficult as they might be, we still use Roman numbers today. We can see them on a clock face. They are used for the copyright date on films and TV programs, sports events like the Olympics, 20 Winter Games. Monarchs are usually numbered in Roman, King Edward VII of England. In 1202, an Italian mathematician Fibonacci wrote the Book of Calculation, where he explained the efficiency of Arabic numbers. At first, these numbers were unpopular since people in Europe were used to using abacuses where you could watch the calculation taking place. Over time, Europeans realized how much easier it was to do calculations using the new numbers. And with the invention of the printing press, they became widely known during the 15th century. The names of the numbers in English derive from different languages – Old English, German, Dutch, Latin and Greek. Today, however, I'd like to tell you the origins of two of them. 11 is the first number which cannot be counted with a human's 10 huh? fingers. In English, it is the largest prime number with a single morpheme name. Its etymology originates from a Germanic compound Einlif meaning one left. The word 12 is the largest number with a single morpheme name in English. Etymology suggests that 12 arises from the Germanic compound Twilif, two left over. 
The number 12 is often used as a sales unit in trade and is often referred to as a dozen. Learning numbers in a foreign language probably comes right after learning the alphabet. I'm sure everyone can count to a million or even a billion. But what about this number? Well, it's called a trillion. Then we have quadrillion, quintillion, sextillion, septillion, octillion, nonillion, decillion, undecillion, duodecillion, tredecillion, quattrodecillion, quindecillion, that's 10 to the 48th, or a 1 followed by 48 zeros. You can go higher than that. The highest number is a millimillion, which is 10 to the 3 million and third. However, the Googleplex had often been nominated as the largest number with the name in the world. If a Google is one with 100 zeros, then a Googleplex is one with a Google amount of zeros. Of course, there is more to know about numbers in English, but we hope that you found our trivia both interesting and useful. For more of our learning videos, click this link. Don't forget to subscribe and before we meet again, take care and keep practicing.